everybody, welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nerd Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And let's start with this big shout out to all the hardcore Vaniacs that were outside when I got to the Fallon Studios yesterday. That meant a lot to me. And, uh, and an absolute humongous shout out to the 300 people that showed up to Lucky Strikes last night for the viewing party, had an amazing time. And for all you Vaniacs that can't stay out that late, it's kind of late, Fallon, uh, Mott, link it up to the appearance last night on Jimmy Fallon. I had a lot of fun. Uh, Jimmy was a great guy, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to read some comments. Enough about that. I'm going to read some comments from the computer since I didn't have time to print it up. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, thank you so much for the comments. I want to continue to read them. This is from two dudes from Canada. Uh, the bros talking hockey. Let's see what's going on here. Um, not a fan says, wow, this guy is so annoying. I can't believe the site is in Google's top 10 results. People actually watch this guy? Question mark. Not a fan. I'll be reaching out. Hopefully we can change your mind. I apologize. A lot of high energy. Hope you're talking about the two dudes. I think you're talking about me. Sorry, you don't like the show, but we'll, we'll find you. Uh, Costello says, lurkers come out and play. You know Gary likes numbers. Let's hear some chatter. Good show, hockey, bad wine. What else could you ask for? Um, let's see what else is going on here. North Carolina Wine TV. Kip says, they make wine in Canada with a smile. Love hockey, though. And let's see. Mo Man says, these guys were great for your show, and you should have them on again. Maybe next time they can bring their father who makes wine. Thank you for the comments. We'll get heavily on them in the future. Oh, little, little galley. Just saying. Uh, anyway, I want to get into some seriousness today. Uh, I thought the approach I would take today is one wine, a little bit more in depth. Good concept for the flip cam at home while I'm traveling. Might make for a better show. Might get into some more serious topics. Might wine nerd it up a tad that way. And so that's what I thought I would do. Whipped out a uh, bottle out of the cellar. Little sub-zero unit over there. Uh, Chateau Oprion 2000, excuse me, Chateau Le Mission Oprion 2004. That's a common mistake. There is no connection between Oprion and Le Mission Oprion. So I rolls in at $115 a bottle and is rated 90 points by Robert Parker. And I did uh, open a little while ago and put it in a glass because I wanted to decant it out because it's young wine still. 04 is a very interesting vintage. If you're a Bordeaux drinker, it's still probably the most interesting vintage to go out and buy in the US or around the world for that matter because 2005 was the signal, was the moment of a totally different wine market in the world. The pricing changed dramatically and it hasn't really ever recorrected because demand is higher than ever around the world. Economy's softer now, so we're seeing some impacts that way. But 2004 was one of the last vintages that was priced in a manner that was somewhat uh, affordable. Um, you now see the bigger names getting into much higher price points. I mean, for example, this was a $300 bottle in 2005. So you can see what's happened. And even um, more so, it, it is a vintage that is actually somewhat around very well priced, and to me, if you want a hot tip, fun fact, if Forbes or Wall Street Journal um, or any of these you know, financial type lifestyle players in the media world came out to me and said, write us an article, do us a video about what is the great buy of this exact moment, and I really think that a lot of my intuition would lead towards 2004 Bordeaux. So you're talking about a vintage I appreciate quite a bit. This specific 04 Le Mission Oprion from Le Grave, from the Pesach, um, region uh, is a 42% Cabernet, 55% Merlot, 3% Cabernet Franc, Franc blend. So um, that's going on with the blend. So predominantly Cab and Merlot. Um, a little bit about Le Mission Oprion. It's about a 21 hectare play planted. It's about 8,000 cases a year. So not a lot of wine in comparison to some of the first growths. It's a wine that has gotten enormous prestige and is definitely now in the breath of the first growths in conversation of wine nerdum at auctions and things of that nature. But it's a surprisingly young vineyard. The vines are roughly about 20 years in age on average. They're not talking about very old vines, um, which I think is kind of interesting. Tremendous care goes into this wine. It is uh, naturally hand-picked, long process, serious process, and it's 100% new wood each vintage. Um, so, you know, a couple little fun facts about this wine that I thought could kind of interest you. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. The 
This wine sees about 22 months in, um, in uh, oak, and it's also egg white fined. And so let's get into egg whites. A lot of people, you know, I've mentioned this, nerd it up, one wine gives me some time. Egg white fining. Um, you put about three to four uh, egg whites in a 25 gallon barrel, and what it does that a lot of winemakers believe is really takes out a lot of the tannins. Um, and it is a process a lot of wineries use um, to kind of clean out the wine, make it a little less bitter. It's, it's definitely a big process in the La Mission Oprion uh, winemaking skill set. So, all right, let's get into this. No bucket, as you can see. If you're gonna drink this wine, it's pretty badass, and then I'll drink it tonight. That's that little trick I always talk about. Open it up early and then drink it later at night. So, we'll see with that opportunity. Great color, just gorgeous. One more time, sniffy sniff. Very earthy, very musty. Uh, almost like a moss type component on the nose. Also, also some black cherry, and I also get some pencil shavings. You remember the old school eraser? Uh, not eraser, uh, sharpener, just like a little square. Put the pencil in and just turn it. You know, everybody had one, you know, like a green one, red one. Get a little bit of that like kind of pencil graphite shavings, wood graphite play on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. Big tannins, quite bitter, very young, lots of green aspects on this wine. This is a very young boy. If you have this wine in your cellar, do not make the mistake that I just made. I'm doing it for educational purposes and giving the heart so I feel good about it. But for yourself, right off the bat, even with the amount of breathing I've given this, two, two, half hours, I mean this is tight. Tight as a rock, very bitter. Big tannins on the back end. Looks like you could have used three or four more egg whites to firm that out. Let's see what's going on. Whirl it. I'm actually going to review this later, like a one minute take, show you on the next show um, after four, five, or six hours. There's some blackberry components coming through now on the, on the back end of the flavor. One more shot. Yeah, I mean, this is quite interesting. This wine is barely approachable. The tannins are extremely firm. This is what was really exciting about the 2004 vintage. Unlike the sunshine that gifted the 05 vintage made it approachable, the 2000 vintage, 2003 vintage, made these wines really approachable, really fruity, and very highly scored in the American market. However, 04 is a little bit more of a traditional play. You know, the fruit is extremely fresh, which I like. It's very classic. I like the backbone structure of these wines. Um, they're evolving extremely well. And the more I drink the O4s, the more I believe that the overhype of, not the overhype, let me phrase that because I think the wines are really exceptional. It's a great market. But the excitement and just the adulation that the O5 vintage started receiving early on from Parker and Spectator really just overshadowed this really great play. It's kind of like, you know, siblings. You get six or seven siblings. One's like a high school sports star and, you know, gets all that hype, you know. You know, hurts his knee, doesn't make it happen. You got that daughter in the family who was just really good at English all along and Bamo is one of the great writers, authors of our time. I feel like that could happen quite a bit with a lot of 04s. 05 took that attention early on. 04, slow and steady, little tortoise and hare. Um, that being said, I can't go all the way there. This is going off past dream experiences. This is more about this specific wine and I gotta tell you, this submission is really rock tight. I mean, tight. I mean tight, like when you jump into a cold pool, tight. Uh, this wine definitely shows that character and I think this is at least five to six hours away from opening up to at least something interesting to talk about. More likely, probably six to ten years of cellaring before it gets there. Um, this is one young, borderline unapproachable bottle of wine. So much so that I don't even think I can rate it on the Thunder Show, which is a rarity. Um, but its potential, if I was doing a barrel sample, is probably in that 88 to 92 point range. I'm not over enthusiastic about the potential underneath this tannins that I'm tasting. There's some, some fruit, but it's not something that's really bowling me over. Kind of disappointing in that, in that aspect, you know what I mean? You get that wine, you get pumped, and you guys feel it more than I do. Being in the business, I get spoiled. I, I get to that level where I don't interact with the wines on the same level you do. You go out and buy a $115 bottle of wine, you pop it, Best be sure it's good. You get pissed. Um, it's funny, I, but this wine kind of disappointed me. Let me just give it one more shot. A little fig action on the nose. I am picking up a little bit. Kind of neat. Let's give it a whirl. Dark. 
our truth. A little chocolate in the back end too. It's quite amazing. I mean, talking about five minutes, I do truly feel my palate is more primed. A little miche. My palate's a little more primed, and I'm tasting it a little bit more. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, probably 89, 92 point type wine, all said and done, would not go run out and buy the 04 La Mission. However, don't underestimate the power of the vintage. Question of the day. Lots of questions, but only one for you. Please leave some answers. Um, when I say 2004, what do you think? You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.